Okay, in this question, uh, we've got this rather interesting story about preschoolers' toilet stops. But uh, the, the main point of this question here, the first is just a bit of preamble. Uh, Claire, being a statistician, uh, must be a good person, uh, wonders whether or not her friends Fiona's preschoolers' toilet trips can truly be random. Uh, I don't know many statisticians that think along these lines, but anyway. Um, so she gets her to collect data on the number of poos that a certain... Um, preschooler does and here's our data here so we've got the number of toilet stops in two hours um, that's quite a lot uh, especially in two hours and then we've got the frequency the number of times that occurs so obviously this uh, preschooler with uh, 14 times of took going to the toilet in two hours uh, it's probably got a bladder problem but anyway uh, if we go on to the first question here what is the expected number of toilet stops Fiona's preschooler needs in two hours when on an outing so basically here we're looking for the expected value of x and instead of doing it manually where you go 0 times 6 plus 1 times 13 blah 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 and, and and divide it all out we're going to use our graphics calculator so fire up your graphics calculator and we'll go through the steps on that so on our graphics calculator we're on the stats screen on the main menu and we press execute to go into the screen here now on this screen here in list one and list two we're going to enter the data from our field of values so first of all in the first column we're going to enter the, the number of toilet stops in two hours so we go zero don't forget the zero one two so we're basically entering each of these values into the calculator six seven eight so we'll put those in then we'll, we scroll across to list two now we're going to put the frequency amounts into that column so six thirteen fourteen nine so on and we get all the way up to where we put the last value in which is zero for eight or more at which point once I've done that so two two one and then zero right so now what we do is we come up to uh, the top and we can press calculate and then we've got these screens here we want to go in and just set them so they're all right so what we need is we need to pick list one for the first one whoops I pressed the wrong button so I'll just escape out of that. So I actually want list one for one variable X list. Scroll down to the frequency. The frequency's in list two on the previous screen. So I press the soft key, press two, and you'll notice here I've got list one, list two. That's exactly what I want. Come back to the screen, press the one variable key there. And what I'm looking at here is this first line, expected value or the mean, which is the expected value of X. Okay, so that tells us that um, the mean number of times, so the expected value of x, which equals the mean, that tells us tells us that uh, the expected number of value or the mean number of uh, visits, number of visits by the preschooler is that's an S. 2.2156 we'll just do uh, one decimal place but you can do more decimal places if you want to I'm just going to put one decimal place so 2.2 times for every two hours um, which is quite a lot for a preschooler even but anyway that's what that question's trying to get you to on the next slide we'll do the next question so question part two we've got the data here displayed as a bar graph uh, from the previous table so the plotted it here there it all is um, so what it's saying is using your mean from the first part, okay, so we've uh, calculated the mean or the expected value, I'm going to use it as 2.2, but you could use 2.22, because whatever, it's up to you, uh, depending on what you got for your previous answer. Comment on how well the situation can be modelled by a Poisson distribution, so there's a clue, we're doing Poisson. And you can draw evidence on the graph as well. So what they're asking you to do here is basically compare what the answers you would get from a Poisson distribution for all these different options uh, with a mean of 2.2 and compare it to what we got from our expected values. So what you're going to do is you're going to work out the Poisson values for each of these and graph them on the graph and then make some comments. And so I'll just show you a video of how to do this on your calculator. So on our calculator, uh, we go back to the, uh, the screen here under the stats mode, and you'll notice I've deleted the data in list two from our previous question. Now, you might be asking how to do that. You can highlight either option uh, individually and delete them, or you can press the arrow key and go to the delete all option um, and 
so long and it'll delete the list um, that you've currently got highlighted. So I don't want to delete list one, so I didn't have that one highlighted. Now you'll notice here I've got uh, one to eight, um, and I want to show you how I'm going to use that to work out all the Poissons for all those options in a moment. Uh, if you go into your Poisson distribution, uh, press Poisson, and we're looking at the point distributions for this, so we press PPD. What I can do is I could go through, um, let's press PPD, that's what I want. I could go through and make this uh, a variable and make my x is equal to zero because that's the first option, put my mean of 2.2 in, and I could go through each option individually, press execute, uh, write down 0.110, and then go back, change x to one, uh, find out the probability under the Poisson distribution of getting a 1, that's 0.243, etc, etc. That takes a while if you've got a lot to do. I mean, if you're doing 1 or 2 or 3 of them, then that's fairly easy. But I'm going to show you a different way, as if you're dealing with a whole list. Let's change this back to list, and you'll notice here in my list field, I've got list 1. Uh, that's going to look at the values I've got in list 1, which is from 0 to 8, uh, because that was in the table uh, in the question. And you'll see in the graph here, we've got 0 to 8. And then I put my mean of 2.2, or you could put whatever mean you got for the previous question. I'll put that in. And when I press execute, you'll notice I get a table here where uh, I've got a whole lot of values, um, 1 through to, in this case, 9. I don't know why they've done 9, but I've got 1 through to 8 anyway, which is what I want. And so what I'm now going to do is I'm going to take each of these values, in this case here, it's 0.110 uh, for 0, and I'm going to put that on the graph here. So 0.110. Oh, or 0.11, uh, that would be around about there, I'm guessing. Oh, oops, just a bit below, sorry, that's about there. Uh, the second one is 0.243, okay. So 0.243 is just below that one. And then 0.268 is 26, it's a little bit below again, about there. Uh, and so on, and we carry on down. So we've got 0.19, 0.19. Okay, 0.19, that's about there, uh, 0.10, 0.10, oh, that's about there, isn't it? Okay, and then we've got 0 0.04, 0 0.04, that's pretty much being on the dot, that one, and then we've got 0 0.01, so that's a bit further down, it's about there. And then for the last one, it's virtually zero, because that's uh, the same as 0 0.001, uh, which is down here. And I think I've missed one. Oh, sorry, that was the first one, 0 0.05, and the last one's also down at the bottom there. Okay, so that's what our graph looks like, roughly, if we put the Poisson probabilities uh, on top of the actual data graph. So what does all this mean? When we look at the um, expected value, the blue bars, we notice that the peak is a lot narrower than with the Poisson. I mean, the Poisson is pretty close, but you'll notice that these values here at three and four, the Poisson values are a lot higher and the, the Poisson values uh, for six and seven are much lower. So the fit isn't what I would call terrible. I mean, it's pretty close, and you could say that. You know, look, it's it's a pretty close fit. Well, the Poisson distribution has a pretty close fit to what is actually shown uh, on the graph. Now, you could go away back onto your calculator and, and maybe put a slightly different mean in, maybe round it to two and see what happens there. And you'll find it, if you did two, it would model it a lot closer. So, uh, but what you're trying to say here is that it does fit it pretty well. You know, there's a little bit difference here with three and four. So the Poisson peak or the Poisson curve, if you were to draw this as a curve, would be a little bit wider, not higher, but wider. The, the, the curve would go down, but then it would narrow down at the tail a bit more. So all in all, I would say this is a pretty good fit for a Poisson distribution.